Welcome to Lock Sportscast, your weekly source for Lock Sport news and sometimes interviews. This is episode 17. I'm your host, Charles Current. In today's episode, we have a follow up on the Bogota trademark issue, the latest changes to the Lock Pickers United karate belt rules, a new website for tracking challenge locks, a Lock Sport community pass around box, another update on the community challenge lock that Room Picker has been organizing, a few helpful resources for the Lock Sporter, and more. You can find this show on most podcasting apps, YouTube, and at thelocksportscast.com. YouTube, YouTube and a few of the podcast apps have restrictions that limit my ability to post full show notes with links. So if you're using one of those platforms, you can go to www.thelocksportscast.com to find full show notes that includes all links. And Jeff Moss shared with me a few links that he wanted to add to the show notes for the episode that I had with him. The links are to the American Lock Collectors Association, Locksmith Reference, and the Padlock Collectors Facebook group. So I have added those links to the show notes for the A Conversation with Jeff Moss episode. So if you're interested, please go check those out in the show notes for that episode. A few announcements here. Be sure to keep an eye out for A Conversation with Greg Waugh that will be released this Wednesday, September 30th. Greg Waugh is better known as Pac Prez. He is the president of Pacific Lock Company. And I had a chance to sit down and talk with him. And that episode, like I said, will be released Wednesday, September 30th. I've decided to separate out the long form content like interviews and release that on Wednesdays with a slightly different naming convention. So it should be clear to everybody what is a news episode and what is a longer format episode so you can pick and choose what it is that interests you. In Locksport related news this week, shared by Cherell was a bit of a sad story. Uh, on Twitter, Lockmasters tweeted out, it is with heaviest of hearts that we announced that the Miller family, Lockmasters, and the security industry lost one of the truly great ones. Mark C. Miller. On September 21st, 2020, Mark lost his courageous battle with cancer. He was at home surrounded by family and loved ones. And to be honest, I did not know at that point who Mark C. Miller was. So I went and looked up and found his obituary and a little bit about his company. And I thought I would share that with you here real quick in case you also don't know. Mark C. Miller, 57, husband of Stephanie Buffin Miller, passed away Monday, September 21st, 2020, in his home surrounded by his family and his best friend. He was born in Rochester, New York on January 30th, 1963. Mark was the owner and operator of Lock, Lock Masters, Inc. During his career, Mark was one of the first certified professional safe technicians, Hall of Fame member of the Safe and Vault Technicians Association, and the Philadelphia Award winner. He established Friends of Savta Auction, which is Safe and Vault Technicians Association, I believe, which raised over $500,000 for Savta education. Mark traveled across the world teaching safe classes. He was truly an ambassador to the security professional industry. High school and college students were always welcome during the summer at Lockmasters where they could learn real life business and working skills. Mark's humility was obvious to his community. He loved to give and help those in need. So what is Lockmasters? Lockmasters, from their website, Lock, the Lockmasters legacy of invention spans almost a century, four generations, and nearly 100 patents for locks, locking devices, and security products, including the Kaba Mas XO series, which includes the X10 uh, digital lock, uh, combination locks that governments use. Uh, they did own for a while Sergeant and Greenleaf. From the 1950s till 1980, they were the owners of Sergeant Greenleaf. And the way I understand the history of that is 
They licensed technologies to Sergeant Greenleaf. Sergeant Greenleaf owed them royalties. They basically took it in stock and took the company, uh, later selling it uh, back to operate it on its own again. And I'll have a link to their company's website in the show notes. Then I came across an article this week during my searching entitled Houdini-style escapologist Johnny Romensky's legend lives on at Peterhead Museum. And it gives the story of this person, Johnny Romensky, who was a habitual criminal and a Houdini-style escapologist. He was also a war hero. He went by the names also John Ramsey. He was known as Gentleman Johnny and Gentle Johnny. The, he was a career criminal who switched roles to a commando during the later stages of the Second World War. He was given the, uh, the nickname General Johnny by law enforcement officers because he never used violence when he was apprehended. He, when he was caught, he was caught. He spent more than 40 of his 67 years in prison, but during those decades, he, well, he was known to escape sometimes, but also he campaigned and spoke up for fellow prisoners and he would uh, speak up when they were being mistreated and stuff like that. Eventually, with the assistance of some uh, police officers from Aberdeen, he was able to join the military and he was utilized in commando raiding forces. He used his safe blowing skills to perform a number of sabotage missions. He was parachuted behind enemy lines to retrieve documents from Axis headquarters, including Rommel's headquarters in North Africa and Goering's Karen Hall in, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I guess this all culminated during the Italian campaign where 14 embassy strong boxes and safes were opened in the space of just one day as he just displayed his uh, extraordinary skill in uh, breaking and entering and cracking safes. He spent most of his time after the war in and out of jail, eventually dying in Perth Royal Infirmatory in 1972 after suffering a stroke at Perth Prison. And I'll have a link to the article and also a link to the Peterhead Prison Museum in the show notes. You really should check out this guy's story. It's fascinating. You know, just because somebody is a criminal and they're, obs I guess his obsession was the art of breaking in more than what he got, but it sounds like he was just it was in his blood to break into things. And just because you're a criminal does not mean that you're not a patriot. So when, when the war broke out, he used his skills to help his country. All right. And I got a note from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Deadlocks. They have started passing around a Locksport community pass around box. The recipient will get to keep the contents of the box after decoding it and refill the box and pass it on to another Locksport channel. They're going to keep track of where it goes, and they'll keep sharing that information with me so that I can keep you guys updated on where it goes in case you don't already see the videos. It's starting off in Northeast England and is on its way to Pandafrog in Switzerland, and we'll keep you updated as that goes right now, as far as I know, it's en route to Pandafrog. And speaking of Panda Frog, he sent me a quick note letting me know that he is working on a website for tracking challenge locks. He has a video out on that that will be linked in the show notes. From the description of that video, he says, what is projectchallengelock.com? On this website, every challenge lock owner can write down information about their challenge locks and show where it has already traveled. The website is in beta right now. He needs people who would like to start tracking their locks. Later, he will need some mods. So if you want to join the project, you can contact Panna the Frog through his different means. Go check out the video. It's uh, video ENG for English, 069 Lockpicking Project Challenge Lock.com. So that'll be linked in the show notes, or you can just go to his website or his YouTube channel and check that out. 
Room Picker has updated on the community challenge lock that him and uh, Georgia Jim and Picking Patriot have been working on. He sent in a quick teaser video to me, so I will play the uh, audio f- for you guys on the podcast. And for you on the YouTube channel, you will see the video. He also wanted to let us know that the box has officially shipped and weighed 18 pounds and cost a fortune to ship to Mr. Paradise in Hawaii. So, All right, the box is done. I'm going to do a slow walk around. Everything is sealed, both through chain, and I also put caulking on the inside and the lid to seal it. You can see the caulking here. Here's this side of it. And then, oop, come here. here is the bottom of it. So we got curse writing all around this way. Nothing on these two, nothing on these two sides though. But then we got the handles here. So I'm gonna send this out to Paradise. I hammered this with a sledgehammer, so you can't undo this. It doesn't come undone, and it's double wrapped on the bottom here, so this chain is pretty tight around here. I might put the key in Plaster Paris. I haven't decided what I want to do with that yet, but I will send the key with it. All right. Hope you guys like this. All right, and that is the latest update. Like I said, he has shipped it out to Mr. Paradise, and it cost a fortune because it weighs 18 pounds. All right, in the karate belt section, we have a congratulations to Reed or uh, Lock a Lot on YouTube. He has earned his red belt this week. We have another black belt announcement this week from the Lockpickers United Discord. It reads Everyone's favorite vegetable got left on the oven and turned black. Arthur Chakowski, the 2000th, has taken the ultimate picker's path and picked six black belt locks including the Asa Twin Exclusive, Asa Twin V10, Asa Twin Combi, Multilock MT5 Plus, EVA 3KS, and Miwa U9. Who needs, intermedi- uh, who needs intermediate belts? Also, on the subject of karate belts, Corn Cob wanted to make sure that I knew that there were some changes to the karate belt system rules and uh, along with the usual updates to change uh belt rankings for specific locks and add new locks they actually changed or clarified some of the rules and changed a few of them so i'll just briefly go over that here if you want to check it all out go to the lock pickers united discord and look in the belt change log channel so the first one is plug retaining in belt videos in belt videos, requiring a clip or cam w- which prevents the plug from being pulled out was not previously an explicitly stated rule. It has now been explicitly stated. This does not affect all locks equally, so if you have a good reason to film your lock without a clip, you should request an exemption. Just make sure you get that clarified before you go making your video because you don't want to do it and then not get credit. Gutting requirements for black belt videos. There are no exceptions to the gutting rule for black belt videos. If the lock is to count for a black belt, it must be gutted. This was already somewhat accepted to be the case, but now it is explicitly stated. And then there's a specific rule for belt updates and dawn points. Um, Basically, when locks are shifted around and updates are made you either have to apply the updates equally across all the locks you're counting in your dawn point system or not at all you can't go back and say oh well this one got more points and i'm so i'm gonna upgrade these ones because they got more points but i'm gonna ignore upgrading these ones because they dropped points it's all or nothing on previous points There were some shuffling around in the higher belts. We have some upgrades. The Miwa PS has been upgraded from brown to red. It is basically a shorter version of the PR, and it's it's pretty difficult. The JPM Surf has been upgraded from brown to red. The 
Matura Champions C43, C44, C48 have been upgraded from red to black. The Fichet 450, 484 with fault skates upgraded from red to black. The Sergeant Kiso upgraded from red to black. That one's tricky because it normally is not easily guttable. Most of the ones out there have to have uh, roll pins drilled out and stuff to be able to get them. So if I understand correctly, the rule above that I stated means that in order to count this as a black, you are going to have to drill out that roll pin and gut the sucker. Downgrades. Icon TK5 with smooth finger pins has been downgraded from red to brown. The Vachette Radial NT, also from red down to brown. The Multilock MT5 Plus and Icon R10 have now been downgraded from black to red. Remember, there's always a grace period on these things. Um, go to the, the official rules to, to check that out. But So a lot of people pick the Multilock MT5 Plus for a black belt lock after the grace period runs out here. That is not the case anymore. EVA 3KS with more than four mastered sliders will be downgraded from black to red. That is to prevent the easier of the locks from counting the same as the more difficult versions of the locks. Anchor Miwa 3800 has been downgraded from black to red as well. And that's it for the changes to the belting system for this month. Let's move on to lock picking criminal news. This one sent in by redheaded lock picker from Provo City, Utah. A Spanish fork man arrested for alleged involvement in trailer and vehicle theft. A Spanish fork man is in custody under suspicion of felony theft after he was allegedly discovered to be in possession of a stolen trailer belonging to the Provo City Police Department. And from the way the rest of the article reads, it sounds like it's one of those uh, like a bait car, but in this case, a bait trailer. Officers with the Provo City Police Department responded to reports of a stolen vehicle on Sunday around 10 a.m. According to the probable cause statement filed with support or filed in support of the arrest, Detectives had reported a trailer they were staking out was being moved illegally. Uh, officials initiated a traffic stop on a red SUV, making contact with 36-year-old Jeffrey David Lombardi of Spanish Fork, who was allegedly driving the vehicle, according to the arrest documents. Inside of his wallet, authorities reportedly discovered a small bag containing white powder, which tested positive for methamphetamine, they also discovered a bag of clean syringe needles. During the search of the vehicle, police discovered Lombardi had allegedly been in possession of burglary tools, including two inflatable airbags and several car lockpicks, which authorities asserted as commonly used for burglarizing vehicles. Authorities transported Lombardi to the jail where he was booked into custody under suspicion of third-degree felony theft, Class B misdemeanor driving with measurable controlled substances, Class B misdemeanor possession of burglary tools, Class B misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia. During the booking process, officials discovered a bag containing a black tar-like substance that indicated positive for heroin, a possession, or a potential third-degree felony count of possession of a controlled substance within a correctional facility was added to the list. <sighs> Drugs will ruin your life. Okay, and now it's time to take a quick break and say thank you to everyone that contributed to this episode. I just want to put a quick note in here about how I'm currently handling these credits. If you submit information, you'll be credited as a content producer. If you donate via PayPal, You'll be credited as executive producer for the next recorded ex episode. If you subscribe on Patreon, you are credited as an executive producer on every episode recorded for the months that you are subscribed. And please note that interview episodes may be released 
well after they are recorded. And so new patrons may not be credited in those episodes when they're released. I'm not going to go back and re-record intros to episodes that have already been recorded and edited. So just a little caveat there. Please don't be offended if you're not mentioned in those and you've recently become a patron. All right. For, so for this episode, executive producers are Williams Brain for his $5 donation on PayPal. And for the Patreon subscribers, we have Meddler, Panda Frog, Michael Gilchrist, and now Starrylock. So thank you to Williams Brain for, for that donation. And thanks to Starrylock for becoming a patron. It's very much appreciated. Content producers for this episode, we have Redheaded Lockpicker, Deadlocks, Corn Cob, PHP Systems, Zephine, Rune Picker, Michael Gilchrist, Alex Hu, Lowell Forbes, Starry Lock, and Jeff Moss. Just remember this show is only possible because of the information provided by the community. So if you value this podcast, please help support it by sending in any news links, information, anything Locksport related that you can think of to podcast at the locksportscast.com or on any of the social media contact methods that are listed in the show notes or at support.thelocksportscast.com. Don't forget to share the podcast with your lock picking friends. You can leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform or a comment and a thumbs up on YouTube. And there's always Patreon and PayPal if you want to support it financially. And back onto the subject of the Bogota trademark issue. Chris Dangerfield of UK Bump Keys and Lockpick World got in touch with me both on Twitter and via email. I've decided to read the email here because it's a little more detailed. You know, you can get away with more conversation in email. And he says, We believe the word Bogota has become part of lockpicking parlance. The name Bogota has been used freely by suppliers and lockpickers for years before this trademark was registered. Because of this, we believe trademarking such a name stifles the progress of lockpicking and sets a bad precedent moving forward since, at this stage, it's as common as describing, say, a deforest pick or a half diamond. Had the term been trademarked upon inception, everyone would have been aware it referred to a particular brand of pick, not the type of pick. Were anyone to trademark deforest pick, for instance, the community would be rightly annoyed. We trademark the name in UK and Europe so we and anyone else in those areas are able to offer Bogota picks for sale rather than have to describe them as something like a triple peak rake. We make no claims that our Bogota rakes are made by anyone else, rather they are clearly marked as Dangerfield product or multi-pick product in the case of multi-pick items. Having said that, We are yet to make such changes, and the word does not appear in our UK website. If you have any more questions, please feel free to ask. And I did have more questions, and I emailed him those questions, but I also said in that email, if you would prefer, we can have you on the show to discuss this and just have a a, conversation on the show. And... So far, he has accepted that. We're we're working on scheduling that. It probably won't be until the middle of next month. But uh, hopefully we can get that worked out and go about it that way. As of yet, the other half of this argument, uh, I've tried to contact them via Twitter, uh, email. Um, a couple of times, I've had no response at all from them. And we'll move on to that subject to uh, some... Resources for lock pickers and lock sporters that were shared with me this week. PHP Systems sent me a note saying, Hiya, are you aware of the lock bypass village at DEF CON safe mode? It is different to the lock picking village, although might be a bit outside the lock picking hobby. Also, are you aware that Tool UK has a Discord server? Um... Well, first of all, I was not aware of the Lock Bypass Village, and since technically Lock Sport includes bypassing, it does definitely apply to this podcast. So there will be a link to the website in the show notes below. It's kind of cool. It, it's got some uh, Lock Bypass training on there. Uh, 
check it out. I, I can't do an adequate doc job of describing it on this podcast, I don't think. And Cherell sent in a link to an article called Analysis of Zeiss Icon System M, uh, and that's hosted on lockanalyst.org, which is written by Coco Litos and Zephine from Tool UK also shared with me the lockanalyst.org website. There are several blog posts on there, several little articles written by Coco Litos. I really highly suggest you guys go check it out if you want to know details of how these some of these locks work. He he does a great job of getting into the specifics on that. On that note there, I would like to thank PHP Systems for make, getting me in touch with Zephine. Zephine popped on and shared a uh, invite to the Tool UK Discord server. I will have a link for that invite in the show notes. Also, make sure you check out the Tool.UK webpage. It's a great resource. They have some very useful blogs, many of them written by Zephine himself, and he's regularly writing new ones, so keep checking back. It is not a stale resource. This is an ongoing effort by him, so make sure you get over there and check it out. He does a great job on these posts. And we'll move on to giveaways, and looks like we're still having Rune Pickers hashtag RP Spicy Challenge, where you have to take a shot of hot sauce before picking a lock. It should be a, a good amount of fun, and it will end once his wife comes back from maternity leave, which should be December 1st, roughly. And you can check out his idea. Yeah, you can check out his video number 85 to uh, get the details on that. Michael Gilchrist is having his hashtag Norlin100, where he is celebrating his 100 subscribers. And he's got two different packages for the giveaway. So check out his video. L55 for that Norland's 100 or Norland 100 subscriber giveaway. Alex Hu is still doing the Mad Aussie challenge. You can listen to my episode 14 for details on that, or just do a hashtag on YouTube for hashtag Mad Aussie challenge. That hashtag will be in the show notes. Lowell Forbes is still doing his Lowell's Wild One Year Community, Appreci community Appreciation Giveaway for his one-year celebration on YouTube. It will be running for just a couple more days after you see this because it is scheduled to the end on the 30th of September. Starrylock is still doing his hashtag shoutout Monday series where he highlights channels with fewer than 100 subscribers and tries to incentivize people to check out those channels, subscribe and comment by doing a giveaway every month for a Law Lock Tools gift certificate. So make sure you check those out. Just do a search for hashtag shout out Monday or visit Starry Lock's YouTube channel. Both of those will be in the show notes. I am still doing my Pack Lock a Month giveaway. Um, the actual drawings are done on Charles Builds Crap. I will announce the winners both there and on here, the way you get entered into that is basically you share information with me that I can use on the podcast, or you share the podcast on social media, and you get an entry. Just make sure I know that you shared it. Full details, make sure you read the full details in the show notes, or go to giveaway.thelocksportscast.com to get the full details there. Remember, this podcast needs your support. You can support the podcast in several different ways, the most important of which is sending in Locksport-related news and information. Anything you have, events, giveaways, anything, nothing is too small. And don't assume, because it's widely known, that lots of people have sent it to me or I've seen it myself. Chances are I haven't. I work a lot of hours. I don't get to see a lot of stuff. So send it to me anyway. If multiple people people send me the story i'll credit all of you it's fine i have no problem with that share the show with your lock picking friends leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform leave a comment and a thumbs up on youtube if that's the way you uh consume the show you can subscribe on patreon donate via paypal 
If you subscribe on Patreon, you do get early access to the shows. Most of the people on Patreon have already had access to the uh, interviews for a while now. So if you support the show in some way, I will give you a producer credit and mention you on the podcast. I will also put a link to your YouTube channel, blog, or whatever else it is you have in the show notes with that credit if you so choose. So if you have anything like that, please just send me the link along with whatever it is you're sending me. Thank you, and remember to keep it legal.